chains breaking in this room.
lifted up to Jesus. Here I am to worship. Here I am.
an invitation by the Spirit to those that are hungry and those that are thirsty. The Holy Spirit says come. You can come to Jesus. Access is given through His blood. Hallelujah. You can come directly into His presence. Hallelujah. Experience Him. Know Him. Encounter Him. Hallelujah. Who cares about religion? We want Jesus. Hallelujah. We want Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord. We bless your name, Lord. We bless your name. 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 name. Come on, let's everybody just lift up both our hands. Oh, we lift up both our hands. Lord, in acknowledgement of you, worshiping you, glorifying you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. There's, a, there's an impartation of the spirit of hunger, the spirit of thirst after the things of God, after the anointing, after the presence of God, after his word. Hallelujah. We stir that up today. We fan that flame in your life, in every life, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I mean, you know, the real test of, hu- is of hunger, the real test of thirst is not what you do on Sunday morning. It's what you do on Monday morning, Tuesday morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. We bless you. 
Thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Glory. Just shake somebody's hand. Welcome them today in the house of the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. How's everyone doing today? I just want to start out by thanking everyone for their prayers. I believe Mahomes is healed up now, so for the Chiefs game today, so thank you for that. A uh, couple of few announcements. Uh, one, there's a new ladies' Bible study begins Wednesday, February 1st at 9.30 here at the church. And uh, the book they're going to be studying is a book by T.L. Osborne called The Message That Works. If you want to be a part of that, ladies, please see Sister Rose McCormick. She is leading that up. Amen. That's starting this February 1st this Wednesday. Also, Couples Valentine's Dinner, February 10th. Uh, registration is out, so you can go ahead and uh, it's on uh, Facebook on the Cornerstone Facebook page or your email. We've been talking about that, but please go ahead and register. We're doing a bunch of things different, uh, unique this year, uh, different speaker, different food, different, uh, got some surprises. So we're going to have a lot of fun. Amen. And so I uh, want everybody to be a part of that that will, uh, all the couples and everything, registration. Um, and that, that's, uh, you need to register by February 1st. Also, the Eddie James Conference is coming, is going to be with us. February 24th and 25th, it's going to be great, and registration, though, is required. So please go register today. It's $35 to register, and it's a two-day conference, and then he'll also be with us here Sunday morning um, as well. Of course, you can come to that whether you register or not. Uh, also, new prayer time beginning at Cornerstone on February 6th, 6th on Mondays in the afternoon. Anyone that that time works better for you? A new prayer meeting is starting on Mondays, just Mondays. Um, between three and five. So if you'd like to come, the church will be open and uh, we will be in here. There will be people praying. Amen. And final thing is another prayer meeting tonight, our monthly prayer meeting on Sunday nights at seven o'clock. That's tonight. We open heavens here at the church at 7 p.m. Amen. Amen. At this time, pastor is coming. Hallelujah. I mean, he doesn't have to. I'll, I can stand up here and talk. Hallelujah. Yeah. We're so happy you're here this morning. Uh, most of you know that for all of, I don't know how many years, the last Sunday of each month, we always designated that Sunday as we called it Building Fund Sunday, meaning that we took, we took everything from the offering that was not designated otherwise, including the tithes, and put it in our building fund. We, by God's grace, were able to pay off this property totally debt-free as of the last weekend of October. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're very excited about that. Amen. So now we're, we, we've come to the new year, and we're looking forward to new things. And so, so we're going to start again, This starting now. This is going to be the first Building Fund Sunday of the new year and of the new era. And uh, we've got a couple of buildings that we're praying about. Uh, not sure... Exactly. I know you don't want to hear that, but but nevertheless, you got to have money to do it. Amen. Amen. So building fund money goes to buildings. Hallelujah. So uh, 
you know, we want to build a, a large sanctuary out here out front. Uh, we also need a building for uh, classrooms and, and offices. I had a friend of mine had called me, I guess a couple months ago, said he had a dream about our church, about our church property. He told me, he said, and he said I saw a, a two-story building to this side of this building, and it was the hub of international international ministry. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. He didn't know we'd been talking about the need for such a thing. So, praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, for some time, we've been in discussion about building an open-air pavilion on this property. And uh, then it was uh, somebody in the, I think it was Alicia in the prayer meeting, had a vision of us ministering in an open-air pavilion right here on this property. So, but then the big building out here, we need a building that will seat a lot of people. Hallelujah. We've maxed this building out. So, you know, that takes time and it takes finances and we tr put our faith in God. We don't ever put, put pressure on people. We put faith in God. And now that we're debt free, we don't, we don't intend to go back into debt. Amen. We don't intend to go back into debt. Praise the Lord. So, so obviously, obviously we, just, we just take one step at a time. We do what God to, to, tells us to do one step at a time. And uh, the main thing is, is we focus on the main thing. The main thing is prayer and evangelism and discipleship and worship and, and prayer. And, and then we pray and then we, <laughs> amen, praise the Lord. And we come in here and just enjoy the goodness of God and the anointing of the Holy Ghost and, and just have church. Amen, amen. Because ultimately our goal is not a bigger building. Our goal is not more people. Our goal is to glorify God. Amen. And I remember, I remember years ago, it must have been at least eight years ago, when we, were, we started this building fund down at the, the old building. You know, my, my, uh, my, my discussion with everybody from the pulpit is, you know, you know let's just suppose that we, we decide we don't need a building. You know, we don't need a building. We just meet under a tree somewhere. So we gather under a tree. Man, we have a good old time worshiping Jesus, glorifying God, preaching the word and then going out and reaching others for Christ. Well, it won't be too long before, you know, the weather will change. And uh, we'll get a rainy day, and everybody says, well, we need a building. So we'll move into a building. It won't be long in that building. If we do our job where we reach new people and make disciples, that building won't be big enough. Then you'll have to expand. You'll have to build something else. So you don't start out saying we just want a big building. You start out focused on Jesus and focus on the, on the, on the Great Commission reaching people for Christ. And as you reach people for Christ, then that demands you have somewhere to put them. you got to have a chair for them to sit in. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Well, God knows that. So we put our faith in God. Amen? And, uh, and we focus, we focus on, on uh, not necessarily, we don't focus on ourselves, we focus outside ourselves. And that's what we did. Back uh, whenever it was, was it two years ago, you know, we challenge ourselves and, in a sense, challenge God. We don't challenge God. But God did say, in this area, you could put me to the test. Amen. In which we said, by God's grace, we're going to build 20 churches in Tanzania. Then we said, okay, here's my challenge. We're going to build 20 before God pays this building off. We're going to see who wins. Amen. Well, he won. Amen, because we had built 14 when it got paid off. Now, right now, we're at 17. We've built 17 churches right now. We've got about two or three of them that are kind of being finalized right now, but we've built 17, and, and uh, we have money in the bank for three or four more. Amen. Uh, recently, while I was in discussion with uh, uh, one of our supporters, doesn't go to this church, he, built, he gave and supported sponsored a church and, and that church is almost finished now but they had, he had it in his heart to, to, to he said I feel like we need, we need to give these people some water well he didn't know that that area is really desperate for water uh, and uh, this is up near the Kenya border on the, on the, near the coast, in the coastal area and, uh, and so, so I, we began inquiring about a well number one the wells in that area are costing probably six grand, $6,000 to put in to drill a well. 
The other problem is, is because the, the, they're almost at sea level, most of the wells they drill almost are always are salty. So man, it'd be terrible to invest six, $6,000 and get, a, get, a, get salt water, right? So we were discussing that, and then all of a sudden, we come up with the idea. Actually, Pastor Julius in Tanzania came up with the idea. He said, this is what we can do. We can buy a, a water tank that, that, will, that will contain 5,000 liters of water, and put the guttering around the church building with the piping, and so we collect rainwater. I said, wow, that's a fantastic idea. So I said that to the guy asking the questions who had it in his heart to provide water. He said, well, ask him how many, how much would be do seven of those? So we're looking at about $1,100 to do one of those. So he, he's, he's, he's doing seven. Isn't that awesome? He's doing seven. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. So, man, it's just amazing what God is doing. We, we've built 17. We're completing 17 churches in Tanzania. We're right now building a church in Pakistan. Uh, just recently, we have a pastor, partner, friend in Nigeria, and uh, he, he built his church on leased land. He leased the land and built a church there, praying that the owner would sell him the land. Well, recently, the owner contacted him and said, we're selling this land. Amen. Well, that's awesome, except now you've got to buy the land. <laughs> now you've got to buy the land or... or he sell it somewhere else and you lose your church building that he had built. And so God, God, I'm going to tell you what, God just so, you know, we, we partnered with him and has helped, helped him in a big way to, to pay, the, pay for his land. Amen. And we're thankful for that, that God has blessed us. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. I'll just tell you this, you know, I, I sent him, initially I sent him $9,000. I'm trying to remember when that was. That was probably 1st of January. Sent him $9,000. And the moment that, that money left the bank for the wire, you couldn't tell it left. You couldn't tell it left. Because the next Sunday we had a, you're not going to believe this, we had a $50,000 Sunday. <laughs> How do you have a $50,000 Sunday with no pressure? We don't, do pray, we don't do $100 prayer lines, $1,000 prayer line. We don't do that stuff. We don't do raise your hand, who'll give something. We don't do that. Amen. Just talk about the blessing of God and who wants to give, and we just do it. But that's, that's exactly what happened. Amen. Isn't that amazing? That's amazing to me. So I sit back to him. I said, man, that was so easy. I said, listen, if you'll pray for us, you'll pray for us. <laughs> we open ourselves to be a channel. Amen. Amen. So then, then we were able to send him some more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a thrill. It's an awesome thrill. In the, in the early days, in the early days of God dealing with me about, about finances, I was, I was praying. I was fasting. I knew there had to be an answer. I was frustrated because most everything we did, we, did, we barely did it. Money was an issue. And I was fasting and praying that God would help me. And in, in God in His grace began a series of visitations in my life that absolutely transformed my life. And one of the first visitations I had, I, was, I saw a river in a dream. I saw a river. I was standing up on a high place, and I looked down, I saw a river. And the river was absolutely crystal clear, flowing by me. But the thing is, when I looked into the river, the river was filled with, with money. It was filled with dollar bills. And God showed me through that what he spoke to me is he said, I'm going to give you revelation. I'm going to give you revelation on the, on the flow of finances. I'm going to teach you. I'm going to show you. And God showed me that there is a river of an abundance that never runs dry. That never runs dry. Amen. Amen. And it's the same thing, and I've used this illustration before, but if you took a bucket and walked down to the Cape Fear River and you dipped out five gallons and you pulled step back, can you tell there was a lack? Because the moment you pulled out five gallons, it filled back in. Right? So what if you had a tanker truck of 10,000 gallons and you backed it up there and you pumped out 10,000 gallons of water out of that river? The moment you pumped it out, what would happen? It would fill back in. You couldn't tell you pumped it out. Amen. So people don't give because they don't have a revelation 
of God's intention of, uh, and the flow of finances in the kingdom of God. Amen. So, we, uh, we just, I've just decided, man, it's the greatest ministry in the world. Part of our ministry is, 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 is giving it away. You say, you're giving away our money. It's not your money. It's God's money. You put it in the plate, and, <laughs> amen, and you gave it to him. Now, we're giving it to the kingdom, per- kingdom purpose, right? Praise God. So, we're committed to that. So, we, we're committed to that all over the world, and God, God's helping us to be, to be a blessing. And it's, it's an awesome blessing. It's an honor. It's a great honor. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we're very thankful. So, so you say, well, how are you going to get the money to build to build another building? I just told you. <laughs> I just told you. Amen. It, it, it defies logic. How do you get more by giving away? That's the kingdom. Amen. It's the kingdom. You put God in control. You put God in charge. Amen. Hallelujah. And so we're thankful for that. I know some people, they, they wrestle with some of that stuff. You really need to settle that. You need to settle that based on the Word of God. Amen. And every preacher that talks about money is not a crook. <laughs> Amen. It's a, it's a fundamental, foundational part of discipleship. Learning to steward what God has entrusted in your hand. And to realize not everything you have belongs to you. Amen. There's, there's a, there's a, when Daniel prophesied to the, to the king of Babylon, he said to him, The God in whose hand your breath is, you have not glorified. Now you think about it. Ever take a deep breath? Excel it. Take a deep breath. Your next breath is in God's hand. I, my next breath is in his hand. If he doesn't give me my next breath, We're done. Amen. His, my breath is in his hand. Hallelujah. His hand is open. Amen. And so he's God and I want to glorify him. I want to glorify him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And one of the ways we glorify him according to the Bible is we bring to him our tithes and our offerings. Amen. I love to define tithing and I always point out that that in the Bible, in the Bible, most people refer to tithing as paying tithes. Actually, the word pay is not in the original text. That's added. There's no such thing as paying tithes. You don't pay tithes like you pay Duke Energy. You don't pay tithes like you pay, you know, you know, GMC credit or, or uh, Ford credit company for your, your car payment. Amen. That's the wrong, wrong mindset. Tithe is... It's not pay tithe. Tithe is both a noun and a verb. Tithe means tenth or ten percent, and tithing is the action of bringing my ten percent in worship to God. It's an act of worship. I'm coming to the altar in an act of worship, and I'm bringing Him something that's of value. I'm bringing Him something that's of worth, something that represents my life my blood, sweat, and tears, and time. All of that is invested in what God has now given me. So I I take that, and with joy in my heart, I bring it to Him in worship. I've come to God to worship. I have something to give Him in worship. And I'm thankful that He's given me something to give. Amen. I always liken it to like, uh, you know, we, we raise in our kids. And for example, it's, it's, uh, it's mom's birthday, but the kids don't have any money. They don't have a job. So what happens? Daddy gives them money to buy mommy a present. What's the point of that? Well, you're teaching them how to be givers. You're teaching them how to, how to honor, right? So what does God do? God gives us. We have nothing. We're not the source. It doesn't begin with us. It didn't begin with you. Amen. He gives me something to bring to Him in worship. Hallelujah. That's beautiful. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory. So, that's what we're going to do today. We're going to give. Praise the Lord. Pastor Matt usually does these offertory messages, but once a month I'll do one. All right? Let's all stand up. You probably prefer him, but nevertheless, I'll do it once a month. I get it.
Praise God. Lift up your hands. Father, you have enriched our life. You have blessed us spiritually. You blessed us emotionally, mentally. You blessed us financially. You blessed our marriage. You blessed our, our children. You blessed our grandchildren. You blessed our church. And Lord God, you blessed us. And we're thankful and we acknowledge that today. Father God, and with great joy in our heart, Lord, today we bring to you an offering. We bring to you our tithes in worship. God, we thank you, Lord, that you receive it from our hand as an act of worship. Father God, thank you, Lord, that you have commanded your blessing upon us. Thank you, Lord. You've commanded your blessing upon us. And we give you praise in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, let us worship. children may his presence go before you and behind you and before you around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in the coming in your going say how thankful I am Burns and Bubimi we're so thankful for God keeping you safe praise the Lord amen you guys want to say something come up here brother just say something to the Lord glory their house caught on fire this week but, but God was faithful amen amen praise the Lord praise the Lord amen amen um God is so grateful um, His blessings we, 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 we don't even understand Sunday is a day we normally go out for ice cream and um, this Sunday we had friends over so we decided to stay home we had a beautiful lunch Pastor you missed that one we had a beautiful lunch and um just sitting, relaxing, we started smelling smoke. And nobody knew what to do. But when we sit back and think about it, we understand that God kept us home. God made this happen. And the end story is, through all of this, God was glorified because a neighbor of ours came over church do you guys go to? Wow. We must be praising a God that looked after us. So we're just thankful and just thankful to this church. <laughs> I was laughing with Boo and I said, wow, we have so much food, I think I'm going to gain three full pounds. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you again, yeah. Pastor. Reach out. Everybody has reached out just saying thank you. Thank you to you. Um, just, just want to give God the glory because of his faithfulness and his goodness. Um, in all of this, you know, Pastor said something, and he asked that if anybody wants to come out, if you don't know him, I just want to throw out the challenge to you that if you don't know our God, if you, if you don't have a relationship with him, please, please speak to Pastor afterwards. Speak to the prayer team. We're confident in the goodness of our God. We know that his faithfulness, his goodness will follow us, will chase after us because we serve the living God. So please, if you do not know him, speak to pastor afterwards and get to know this God that we serve. He is faithful. 
Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Let's pray over these guys. Come on. Let's pray. Everybody, let's just stand up. Anything you need from us, brother? Just, okay, just me. Come on, let's just pray for them. Let's just be thankful to the Father. Thank you, God, for your hand upon their life. You preserved them, kept them safe. Lord, I thank you for that, Lord. Thank you supply every need in their life. Lord, we give you praise in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Bless you. Bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Remember, excuse me, I remember some years ago, Jimmy Davis called me about 2 o'clock in the morning. He said, Pastor, my house is on fire. I thought he was joking, but I jumped in the car, and he was living in Coates at the time. I was living in Anger. Man, was speeding down the road. I went down there, went about a mile away. The whole sky was lit up. I said, oh, my God, I hope he got those kids out. And he did. Amen. Shell wasn't home then, but that's all that matters. It comes down to that. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's let's open our Bibles. Let's turn in our Bibles to the book of uh, book of Genesis. Appreciate Pastor Matt preaching last Sunday. A lot of good uh, reports about the service, the message. Amen. Proud of him. What God's done in his life. How God, what God's brought him from. Known him since he was about 12 or 13 so he's come a long way amen <laughs> his sister's laughing I know but and Rodney Pastor Rodney uh, also appreciate Bethany proud of her she preached on Wednesday night amen a lot of great reports about that praise the Lord when I first met her started dating David and Methodist girl going to a Baptist church and Loved Jesus, came to this wild Pentecostal group and didn't get afraid and run away. So now she's all in. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's good. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And who would have thought that David would have married somebody who wanted, wanted, had an interest in missions? Wow, that was a shocker. Amen. It, it proves there's a God. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Those who you wouldn't have known. Amen. Uh, Genesis chapter 14. Two Sundays ago, we started talking about. We talked about the blessing. We looked at it in 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 Adam's life, and we looked at some some different aspects of that there. And, uh, but let's look here in, in Abraham, Abraham's life in Genesis chapter 14, beginning with uh, verse, we'll begin with verse 18. And uh, let, no, let's begin with verse 17. This is after what the Bible calls the slaughter of the kings, which, which Abraham is rescuing Lot, his nephew, who's been taken captive uh, by the king of uh, uh, Cheddar Laomer, however you say that. But nevertheless, that's, that's who it was. And now Abraham... Uh, with God's help, gets up, has 318 guys, attacks four kings and their armies, and defeats them. Amen. Then uh, verse 17, and, and then after that battle, and of course, you know, the interesting thing, it, it appears in those days, the armies took all their gold with them. I guess they out there on the field, they needed money to buy supplies, and so they had all their gold, plus they were spoiling villages and cities, and they were collecting all the... All the uh, the gold and silver from all those different cities so they got all this gold and silver with them and so Abraham having defeated those armies he has all this now he's got all this spoil you just imagine mounds of bags of gold and silver and whatever else and uh, and then verse 17 and the king of Sodom this uh, Sodomite king went out to meet him at the valley of Shava that is the king's valley after his return from the defeat of Chedorlaomer the kings are with him then Melchizedek, then Melchizedek. So you're introduced, first of all, to uh, the king of Sodom who comes out to meet Abraham. Now we see there's another guest coming out to meet him, and it's Melchizedek. Then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. So the moment we see that, we, 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 we having now known, we know the New Testament, the New Covenant, and the Last Supper, we call it communion, that Jesus introduced 
we understand that this is a, this is a, a, a type, a shadow of communion. And so Melchizedek comes out, and he is, uh, the Bible says that he's king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was priest of the Most High God. So being priest of the Most High God, he brings to Abram, at that time Abraham, uh, bread and wine, type of the communion which gives us uh, insight or thought about covenant. Abraham is in covenant relationship with God. Amen? Covenant relationship with God. So, so then the Bible says, and he blessed him and said. Notice, notice the order here that, that what happens. He meets Melchizedek. Melchizedek gives him bread and wine. The, the, the bread representing what? The body of Christ broken for us. The wine representing the blood of Jesus poured out for us. And, and then on, on the basis of of the bread and wine, the priest of the Most High God now confirms and declares a, a blessing upon Abraham's life. Now, if we stop right there, we know that God himself has already blessed Abraham because you go back here to, let's do that real quick, go back here to chapter 12. Abraham has, a, has, has an, an encounter with God, literally, as the Bible says, God appears to Abraham and says to him in verse 1, he said, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you, you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. I will curse him who curses you. And in you, in you, and I would, I would add to that, in you meaning what? In the Abrahamic covenant. In you, he says, what? He says, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Amen. So we began there and to see that God has an intention. And he's had this, let's use this thought, he's had this thought from eternity. We saw it with Adam. How that when God created Adam in his own image and likeness, and in Genesis chapter 1 verse 28, God said, and God said, and God blessed him. God did what? God blessed him. And in blessing him, he says, he gives five commands. And I know it reads, it reads like this. God blessed him and said, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, and have dominion. But really, each of those words is a one-word command. God blessed him. God spoke over him. The exact same way that God spoke and said, stars be, and stars were it was. That there be stars. That was, that was creative power. Amen. So now God is, is created Adam, and God says, fruitful. That's a command. That's not a, that's, that's, not, that's a command. Fruitful. Multiply. Subdue. Fill. Have dominion. God gives five commands over Adam that the Bible said were a blessing, or it was divine empowerment. Amen. So how is he going to, be fruitful. How is he going to multiply? How is he going to fill the earth? How is he going to subdue the earth? How is he going to have dominion? Because the blessing was the power to do it all. So God created Adam in his own image and likeness. Now God puts something on him. And what God puts on him is the power to do that. Amen. Then I'm not going to go all the way back through Genesis chapter 2 where God plants a garden and then the Bible says he planted a garden but it hadn't grown yet. And why hadn't it grown yet? It hadn't grown yet. Nothing had sprouted out of the ground yet. Because why? Because it hadn't rained and because the man wasn't there. But the moment the man walks in, all of a sudden the ground comes alive. Amen. Suddenly the, the, the things that God had planted just springing up out of the ground. And I think Gordy disagreed with me. but <laughs> And it started raining. It was an atmospheric change. The moment that man walked in on that garden, the atmosphere changed. So the earth needed the man. The earth needed what was on the man to be fruitful. Are you with me? Amen. <laughs> I used to say there's only two perfect people in this church. Amen. One was me, another was Gordy, and I was wondering about him. <laughs> I love Gordy. Hey, I'm joking with him. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So it started, it started raining, right? Hallelujah. That's awesome. Now, if you, if, you need, if you need further verification of that thought, 
you know, it's in, I think it's in Isaiah chapter 66. I don't know the exact verse. What happened to the, to the land of Israel? What happened to the land of Israel when the people, Israeli people, were removed? In other words, the, the Roman legions came in, destroyed Jerusalem, took all the people of Israel, and dispersed them to the nations. What happened to the land? The land dried up. The land dried up. I read a, I read a, a historical record from the, I don't think it was back in the 19, early 1900s. They had a number of actually how many trees was in the land of Israel. They numbered them. There were so few trees in Israel at that time, they had them all numbered. But what happened when the people came back to the land? The Bible says the desert blossomed like a rose. What was on those people, the moment they stepped on the land, the land responded. Amen. Now that is a, that is a revelation about the blessing. There's something on you. There's something on you that changes atmospheres, that the, the earth responds to that your business environment responds to. Other people may have failed. Other people may have struggled, but there's something on you. And the moment you step into that position, not arrogance, not pride, but the blessing of heaven flowing upon your life, everything shifts, everything changes. Hallelujah. We see that in Adam. And the moment Adam sinned, what happened to him? That came off of him. Then what happens? By the sweat of his brow. In other words, the blessing was spiritual. The curse comes. And if you read, I, I know I'm jumping around here a lot, but if you read there in Genesis chapter 3, Genesis chapter 3, when God was talking to Adam, he says, uh, he says to him in verse, uh, in verse 17, he says, Because you've heeded the voice of your wife, eaten from the tree which I commanded you, saying you shall not eat of it, cursed is the ground for your sake. There it is. Curses is the ground for your sake. Uh, Amplified says, curses the ground because of you. Why was the ground cursed? Because of Adam. Because no longer is there a blessing on him, there's a curse on him. Now I want you to see that. That whether the ground produced an abundance or whether the ground produced a, a small amount <laughs> was spiritual. Now that doesn't mean you don't have to educate yourself. And that don't mean that you, you don't have to work hard. But you have to understand that there's a spiritual dynamic, there's a spiritual power involved that God wants to put on his people. Amen. Hallelujah. So that you succeed, you prosper, you become influential, you become the head and not the tail. Why? Because kingdom purpose. Kingdom purpose. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So we see that on Adam. So the, whether the ground produces an abundance or whether the ground produces nothing is spiritual. Isn't that right? The blessing on him produces an abundance. The blessing's not on him. There's a curse on him. The blessing, the ground barely gives him, he's, he's in survival mode. Amen. He's in survival mode. Hallelujah. But we, we, don't, we, don't, we, don't, we don't like that. Amen. How many, how many of you know the difference between, between I'm going to give you a term here, medieval Christianity. Medieval Christianity produced the dark ages in history. Medieval Christianity versus apostolic Christianity. Apostolic Christianity is the Christianity introduced by Jesus himself and the apostles. The Christianity introduced by Jesus and the apostles was directly connected to the Abrahamic covenant. And our roots, the roots of Christianity was Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That was our roots. That was our history. That's where we came from. That was our forefathers. Even Paul called Abraham our father Abraham. Now what happened is Constantinople makes Christianity the state religion and one of the things that he does is he severs the roots of Christianity from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and moves the church, and the church is moved away from that, and the church is filled with pagan thought. And the moment you get that, the moment you get that, you start getting what's called vows of poverty, vows of celibacy. In other words, 
vow of poverty. I believe I'll be more spiritual. I believe I'll be closer to God. I believe I'll get more done for God if I take a vow of poverty. That is paganism. That is, that is medieval Christianity. That is, a, that is a corruption of the real Christianity. The real Christianity, the, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ is the God of Abraham. Hallelujah. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, His name revealed to Abraham is El Shaddai. He, he is El Shaddai, meaning He is the God of plenty. He is the God of abundance. He is the God of more than enough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Christianity embraced the idea of poverty that came out of paganism. Paganism. I mean, you go study, you go study, uh, eat today. You go study, I'm not telling you to do it, but you, uh, you go study Hinduism. You go study Buddhism. You go study Islam. All of those believe that suffering and lack and poverty is a way to be more spiritual. And that's not a, not, it's not a New Testament biblical concept. Amen. Hallelujah. And there absolutely has to be a shift in the way we see that and what we believe about that. Amen. In Exodus chapter 6, verse 3, put up Exodus chapter 6, verse 3, God says to Moses, Exodus 6, verse 3, God says, Moses, he, says, uh, he said, I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and Jacob as God Almighty, but by my name, Lord, I was not known to them. There, the, the English God Almighty is El Shaddai. He said, I appeared to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as El Shaddai. That's how they knew me. They knew my name. My name was El Shaddai. <laughs> Amen. But by my name, Jehovah, I was not known to them. So if you said, Abraham, who is your God? Abraham, what is his name? He said, my God is El Shaddai. He is El Shaddai. Well, Abraham, what has he done in your life? He said, look around me, hallelujah. He's not just El Shaddai in name only. He's El Shaddai in everything he's doing in my life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. So the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is God Almighty in Hebrew is El Shaddai. And that is the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ is El Shaddai. How can you have a God whose name is El Shaddai and believe he wants you poor? My God is El Shaddai and he likes me poor. Well, why is he? I mean, look at how extravagant he is. Look at creation, the extravagance, literally the waste. He goes way overboard. Amen. Way overboard. Look at heaven, for crying out loud. <laughs> I mean, streets of gold. Somebody says it's paved. It's not paved with gold. It's pure gold. The road out here in front is paved. It's about that thick of asphalt. Once you get past that, you hit dirt. You get to heaven, you take you a drill and drill down. You get through the gold, man. You in the space. <laughs> you get your drill bit of 1,500 miles long. You get through all that gold. It's not paved in gold. It's pure gold. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen. You have to change how you see this. The Lord spoke to me in my journey years ago. He said to me, he said, he said, you, he said you and I think different. You're going to walk with me, you're going to start thinking like me. Amen? You're going to start thinking like me. I said, okay. Well, how do you think? <laughs> Hallelujah. Many of you heard this story. I tell this, I tell this often, and I like to tell it. Sherry and I were really struggling. You know, I was in uh, traveling ministry, and every Monday I'd get home. You know, I'd be somewhere preaching that weekend, come home. Every Monday we'd sit down at the kitchen table and figure out the money and the bills. And it was always more bills than there were money. Amen. Because most churches I was preaching in, they still believed they should have believed, uh, God, you keep him humble, we'll keep him poor. Anyway, so, so we sat down at the table, and we, 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 we talking, we talking, we talking, and inevitably, I'd get mad. I'm just mad, you know, I'm mad. And this particular Monday, I'm mad because of the electric bill. 
I mean, for crying out loud, how can, how can the electric bill be that high? So my, my, my thought is, well, my wife, I said, you and these three kids, you leave every light on. You don't turn lights off. I need you to turn some lights off. <laughs> Amen. All right, so, so I just said, okay, listen, I'm walking outside. Just, I've got to cool off. So I walk outside in the front yard, and I'm walking back and forth across the front yard, and I'm having a conversation with God. I said, God, I don't understand this. This don't make any sense. I'm talking about, you know, this is 20 years ago. I don't make any sense. I don't get this. I don't understand this. <laughs> you know, you're God, and you live in me, and we, we're, 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 we're struggling here. What's, what's, what's happening? What's going on? And about, I'm out there long enough that, the, that's, that, you know, it gets dark and the stars start coming out. And as I'm looking, I look up at the stars and they look so beautiful. And then I hear the voice of God as I'm looking at the stars and I hear him say, I never turn them off. I said, well, I said you're on her side. <laughs> you can't win. Amen. He said, I never turn them off. He said, I think different than you. He said, there's no limit to my supply. I don't cut them off and on to save energy. I leave them on all the time. He said, if you're going to walk with me, you've got to change the way you see things. You've got to change the way you see me. You have to change the way you see yourself. You have to change the way you see your world. It's got to shift. His name is El Shaddai. His name is El Shaddai. He's God Almighty. He's creator. And when he created everything, he created everything in an absolute abundant supply. There's, there's way more than enough. If, if, if the world lasts for another 100 generations, there's enough resources in the earth to abundantly supply every generation that is to come. God knew you were coming. Don't believe the propaganda and the lies that the earth is running out and that people are going to starve. and Yeah, people are going to starve in some locations and it's all because of government policy. Don't make me preach. Amen. As far as the earth, the earth is abundant. Earth is full. Earth is the, earth, earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Amen. And so God's intention was that you be blessed. Now, you have to see that. God's original intention is for you to be blessed. I mean super abundantly blessed. That is God's original intention. He made plans for that. He made provision for that. Christ Jesus even redeemed you from the curse of poverty so you could have that. But then enters religion, which is Satan's greatest tool to rob us of God's best. Colossians chapter 2, God, Paul said, Beware of philosophy. That will rob you. And that's exactly what happened. You got Christians right now that they heard a preacher talking like I'm talking right now, they just get fuming mad. Just get fuming mad. Amen? <laughs> Amen. But, but it's, it, I'm just, everything I'm, I'm telling you is right out of the Bible. Amen? El Shaddai. El Shaddai. You ought to do a study on the word El Shaddai. El Shaddai. Shaddai literally means, has the root of, 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 of breasty one. It doesn't mean that God is a woman or that he has breasts. But it speaks of, it speaks of fertility. It speaks of abundance flowing with milk. That's what it speaks of. He's the, if you want to say it like this, you could say God is Jehovah Rapha. He is the, 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 he's the healing God. Right? But if you take El Shaddai, you have to say he's the God of prosperity. You have to say that. That's because that's what that literally is talking about. El Shaddai, he's the God of prosperity. Now the devil, listen, the devil, the devil wants to be like God. So what does he do? If you study the Old Testament, you'll find that two of the main gods of the Canaanites was Baal, B-A-A-L, and Ashtoreth. Ashtaroth was the goddess of fertility, which, which is an idol, which is a, a demonic thing, but it's a carving of a woman with breasts. 
Why? Now, if you go, listen, don't, don't be disrespectful, but if you go into some shop and, they're, and it's being run by, by, by people of the Indian background and they're, they're Hindus, inevitably they'll have an image somewhere in their shop or they'll have a picture on the wall. Many of those gods that the Hindus worship are the same gods that the Canaanites worship, and their gods are gods of fertility, and it will almost always be a woman with, with usually multiple breasts. Why? Because it speaks of fertility. And they are, the devil's deceiving them to think that the only way you can get your ground or your shop to prosper is you need supernatural inter, inter, intervention. And so they presented them this goddess and they worshiped this goddess with offerings and sacrifices. I'm telling you the facts. And according to the people that I know that have gotten saved out of those, those types of lifestyle, it works for them. Now, it's costly. Satan may, may call some good things up front, but he's got a, he's got a hook in the, in the bait. Amen. So these guys, these guys believe in prosperity and they believe that that goddess in that picture is actually causing their shop to, or their business to prosper. They believe in that. They give sacrifices to that thing. Amen? Amen, that's a fact. That's a fact. And here's these, please don't get mad at me. Here's these poor little Christians. Our God is El Shaddai. We don't even know it. That thing is a fake. It's, it's a cheap imitation of the real deal. Of the real deal. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I said of the real deal. Amen. Those are just images. Those are just de demons. Isn't that right? Who don't have a great intention on nobody. But our God is the creator. Our God has all power. And his intention, his intention is to bless you. And religion has, has taught us to hate money. Yeah. Religion has taught us to never admit we want or need more money. Most Christians never pray for money. They don't. They're scared to. Wow. Whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them, you shall have them. Mark 11, 20, 24, right? But you don't desire it, so you never pray for it. You don't have any faith for it. Right? Desire is one of the elements of the prayer of faith. If you can't admit you want it, you'll never have faith for it. Well, I'm not supposed to want it. It's carnal to want it. It depends on what it is to you. Amen. The love of money, the love of money is idolatry. It's best illustrated by the golden calf in the wilderness. God gave them the gold. They turned the gold into a golden calf and worshipped it. <laughs> when it's real purpose, God gave them the gold and God wanted them to build a tabernacle that he could tabernacle among them. Hallelujah. And then go into the land of promise flowing with milk and honey. That was God's real plan. God was God's plan. It wasn't their plan. It was God's plan. I want to say something over every person here today. God has a plan. God has a plan to raise you up. God has a plan to promote you. God has a plan to prosper you. God has a plan to increase you. That is the plan of God over your life. God wants that. He desires that. Hallelujah. Amen. And if you'll be faithful and loyal to him and his kingdom and his purpose, I'm telling you, he will put resources into your hand. He will bless you beyond your wildest imagination. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The pattern. Adam is blessed. You see what happens. Now we go a couple of generations, and now here's Abraham. Abraham is blessed, but the blessing on Abraham is for the families of the earth. Hallelujah. Then Abraham, Genesis chapter 14, he encounters Melchizedek, and Melchizedek brings him bread 
and wine and then confirms the blessing. So he has a, a prophetic confirmation of the blessing that God gave him in Genesis chapter 12. Amen. Are you with me? So the blessing is based on what? The blessing is based upon the elements of the bread and the wine. He gives him bread and wine and then blesses him. The blessing is not based on anything that Abraham, ha Abraham has done except his faith in the living God. Amen? Now you have to get that. There's a difference between the priesthood of the order of Melchizedek and the priesthood of the Levites. There's a difference. Amen? The Levites came out of Levi. You have the Arianic high priesthood, and they represented God. Under the Levitical priesthood, you had to tithe before you were blessed. You had to tithe to get blessed. That's Levitical priesthood. We're not under the Levitical priesthood. We're not. We're under the priesthood after the order of Melchizedek. So our tithe is directly connected to the person of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Who did Abraham give his tithes to? He gave his tithes to Melchizedek. Now, who is the high priest after the order of Melchizedek? It's Jesus. It's Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why am I blessed? I am blessed because of the bread and the wine. I'm blessed because of his broken body. I'm blessed because of his poured out blood. I'm blessed because of his grace upon my life. His blessing comes upon my life because of his grace. Now that his grace is on my life, I am blessed. I worship with my tithes. I worship with my tithes. Hallelujah. I'm not trying to pry open heaven. I'm not trying to get the windows of heaven open. I'm here to tell you that Jesus split the heavens wide open. Hallelujah. He split them wide open and his grace, his blood, his sacrifice was enough. Hallelujah. In the mind of God for everything in my life. Hallelujah. I just want to tell you, I don't care if you give everything. I don't care if you give your body to be burned. If you, it doesn't measure up to the sacrifice of Jesus. Now, many years, many years, people, we pre you know, preachers have preached out of Malachi chapter 3 regarding the tithes. And that's talking about the Levitical priesthood. I mean, read, read, read Hebrews. Read Hebrews chapter 5, 6, and 7. And it gives a contrast there between the Levites, the order of the Levites, and the, and the and order of Melchizedek. When Jesus came, the Bible said if Jesus was upon the earth, he would not be a high priest. Why? Because he did not descend out of the tribe of Levi. He came out of the tribe of Judah. But God said when he raised Jesus from the dead, God said, I have sworn that this day my, I, my, my son is begotten. He said he swore that you are a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So you got this huge argument. People, people say, well, I'm under grace, under the new covenant, and, and, and tithing is done away. That's not true. That's not true at all. But the priesthood shifted, and the order of the blessing shifted. I don't tithe to get blessed. I don't tithe to open up heaven. Jesus did that. His blood opened up heaven his blood opened up my life for his grace upon my life now I come shouting with my ties hallelujah I come shouting with my ties <laughs> hallelujah amen wow amen I love to tithe I love it amen I love it I've had people try to talk me out of it. Just don't, want, don't try to talk me out of it. It's too late to talk me out of it. Man, I know it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. 
We taught our kids. You say, Pastor, you just did it for the money. That, that is so... <laughs> I taught my own kids to tithe. When my kids were old enough to get birthday money. They get a $5 bill say, hey, 50 cents of that belongs to Jesus. My kids get a $20 bill. Hey, two bucks of that's Jesus's. Amen. In the beginning, you don't give them a choice. You help them. You help them enjoy putting it in an envelope and writing your, their name on it and putting it in the offering plate. Let it become a joy in their life. Amen. There are people that are adults to this day. There's no joy in it. They look for every shortcut. I had a pastor say to me one day, set me down one day. He, he, saw, he saw my expenses because I had to fill out a report. He saw my expenses. He said, man, dude, why are you giving away so much money? He says, you need to deduct all your, all your costs. <laughs> he said, it costs you gas to go to these churches. You've got to buy toothpaste. I'm really. He said, you've got to buy shampoo, man. You need to deduct that shampoo. You need to deduct that soap. You need to deduct that gas bill from all that you made and then what's left over. Then you tithe. I said, I ain't doing that. No, 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 sir. No, no, no. Amen. Can you imagine that? Get cheap with God. God, take deduct the toothpaste. Deduct the toothpaste. Amen. Huh. Wow, wow, wow. Well, I got a few minutes left here, so let's get back here to Genesis 14. I, I, I got sidetracked. So the God of Abraham is El Shaddai, right? The Bible says in and, and verse 18, And Melchizedek, king of Satan, brought forth bread and wine. He was the priest of the Most High God. So bread and wine represents covenant. Abraham partakes of that bread and wine. He's partaking of the benefit of covenant. Bread and wine is not only a, a partaking of the benefit of covenant, but it is a reminder, it is a remembrance, it's a refocusing on the covenant. We are in a covenant relationship with God. Amen. Covenant. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. Now stop right there. How did Abraham know that God was going to make him rich? Because when God says to him, when the, when the high priest prophesied and spoke a blessing, he called him, blessed be Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. Literally, at that moment, God made Abraham possessor of heaven and earth. He became the possessor of heaven and earth. Blessed be Abraham of God Most High, possessor. This verse is saying Abraham, through the covenant, is a possessor of heaven and earth. Because then he names God after that, and he says, Look, let's read on. Let's read on. He says, verse, uh, verse 20, And blessed be the Most High God, which hath delivered thy enemies into thy hand. And the Bible said it gave him tithes of all. So I just want you to see that. Turn in your Bible, turn in your Bible, turn in your Bible to, uh, to Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. Put this up there. Romans chapter 4, verse 13. Romans chapter 4, verse 13. Whew. Romans chapter 4, verse 13. Look at what it says. For the promise that he would be the heir of the world. He didn't say he's just the heir of, of, of the Middle East. He's the heir of the whole world. When was Abraham made an heir of the whole world? Matthew, uh, Genesis chapter 14. Blessed be Abraham. Blessed be Abraham of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. I said, how could he be possessor of heaven? His seed is sitting at the right hand of the Father. He's possessor of the heaven and the earth. <laughs> amen. Are you with me? Say amen. I'm going to give you as much as I can in the next 15 minutes. Hallelujah. And blessed the most, be the most high God which has delivered thine enemies into thy hand. And the Bible says Abraham responded to the blessing. He's already partaken of bread and wine. He's already been blessed. Genesis chapter 12, he was blessed. It's now prophetically confirmed he's blessed. He responds to the blessing with his tithes. He responds to the blessing with his tithes. His tithe becomes the evidence or the faith action that he believed he was blessed. Why don't, wouldn't somebody bring 10%? Why wouldn't they? It, it, they're afraid. 
Most people, it's not because they're stingy, they're afraid. They're afraid. What are you afraid of? I'm afraid, afraid I wouldn't have enough to pay my bills. Well, the moment you have covenant relationship with God, your bills are no longer your responsibility. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now watch this now. He gave him tithes of all. In verse 21, the king of Sodom said unto Abram, Give me the persons and take the goods to yourself. He, he, so he gets on, he, 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 he celebrates covenant, then he gets another offer. The king, of Sol, the king of Sodom makes him another offer. And Abraham said to the king of Sodom, I have lifted up my hand to God. I have sworn an oath. I've entered covenant with God. He said, I lifted up my hand unto the Lord, the most high God, the possessor of heaven and earth. I lifted up my hand to God, verse 23, that I will not take from from you a thread or a shoelace in other words he says if I have to compromise and make a deal with the devil if I have to compromise and make a deal and, or an alliance with the king of Sodom he said I would rather have no shoes to wear I would rather have no, no shirt on my back not a thread or a shoe, shoelace this is his integrity. He said, I have made a covenant with God. I have made a covenant with God. He said, I would rather, I would rather live in a cardboard box. Than to live in a mansion and have aligned myself with the king of Sodom. Right? He said, I will not take anything that is yours. Because if he takes what belongs to the king of Sodom, he's obligated to the king of Sodom. He's compromised. He said, lest you should say, I have made Abram rich. Well, it says right there, Abraham fully intends to be made rich. But he's not going to be made rich by, by, by the king of Sodom. What? It's why does he expect to be made rich? Because he has a covenant with God, possessor of heaven and earth, and it belongs to Abram. Hallelujah. Amen. And Abraham acts his faith. He demonstrates his faith, and he gives God tithes of all. I mean, if God made all that promise, you see, tithing, you have to see the background. The background is God's intention. His intention is overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly bless you. But you've got to embrace that by faith. You may not see that in the beginning, but your integrity says, I've lifted up my hand to God. I'm in a covenant with God, and I'm going to go with God. And if I ever have anything, it's going to be because the God of heaven has blessed my life. That's it. If I go from walking to riding a bicycle, if I go from a bicycle to a motorcycle, if I go from a motorcycle to a car, if I go from a car to a, to a Mercedes, whatever that process is, if that ever happens, it's going to be because the God of heaven has blessed my life. It's not going to be because I cut corners. I cut corners and I saw a way that I could keep part of the money. I could keep part of the money. I could keep part of the money. I saw a way that keep, you need to read Acts chapter 6. I could keep part of the money. Amen. Uh, hey. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Some of the most, some of the people that I know, they're just, God is just blessing them left hand, left and right. I know, I know one person right now that doesn't go to this church. I mean, if you look at his life, you, he, you, on the outside, you say, man, everything that God touches turns to gold. Everything. But what you don't know is he gives 25% of his income every year to God. Exactly. 25%. Church, missions, missionaries. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
This church, we give 15% of our tithes away. Feed the hungry, build churches, drill wells. 15% we give away. Give it away. Get it out of here. God said, get it out of here. Give it away. Put it in an account that destiny to be given away. Then I joyfully give it away. Rejoice to give it away. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Hallelujah. But God's going to bless you with, you know, what's, what's the thousands, millions, whatever. You're struggling with $10 out of 100 right now. You know, I, I, I've known people, you know, $10 of 100, well, I can do that. But all of a sudden, they just made 10 grand. You've got 1,000? What? That preacher probably going to live high off the hog off of that. <laughs> that preacher don't get all that. The preacher has a board of directors who sets his salary. Just because you work at the bank don't mean you get all the money in the bank. Amen. We have an accountant. I have a board of directors. I don't get to steal money from the church any more than you do. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Glory. So Abraham, I'm going to give you one more verse as we're closing this. You know, I've got a lot more to preach here, but let's, 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 let's close it. But Abraham, I'm going to give you Romans chapter 4, verse 12. Romans chapter 4, verse 12. The Bible says, And the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham. The moment I recognize that the God of Abraham is El Shaddai, and I see what El Shaddai did in Abraham's life, and then I see that the blessing of Abraham is promised to me, that I want to examine the Bible and see what steps of faith did he take because those are the exact ones I'm going to take I'm not going to try to figure this out on by myself I've got a book I've got a revelation called the Bible and I'm going to I'm going to read it and figure out what did he do what were his steps hallelujah and that's what I'm going to do that's what I'm going to do and I'm going to do it with joy amen I'm going to do it with joy do it with great joy Hallelujah. I'm going to do it with great joy. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. And I love it. I love it. Hallelujah. <clears throat> the pastor, you're just trying to get, get money off us. That, that's a lie from hell. <laughs> Amen. If I talk to you personally, I don't want your money. Really, I don't. God knows I don't. But what I want to see is, I want to see God's blessing in your life. I get, I'm a, I get a continual stream of testimonies of what God's done in people's lives. If you were here Wednesday night a week ago, heard Pastor Rodney's testimony. So I knew Pastor Rodney win too. Amen. He told me himself, I hope you don't mind me sharing, he told me himself that it was in his mind that, that he would be the first generation who didn't make as much money as his dad. His dad did real well in construction. But evidently, he's exceeded his dad now. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 So, Pastor, why do you preach this? Because I want to see you blessed. I want to see you blessed. God came, Jesus, listen. Jesus came to me. I've seen Jesus twice in my life as far as seeing him face to face. He came to me in a dream. He talked to me about what I'm preaching to you about right now. At that point in my life, nothing he was saying to me is reflective of anything that, I'm, that we're seeing today. But he came to me in a dream and he talked to me about this. And he told me to preach it. Did. He told me to preach it. He told me if, if I did, three things would happen. 
He said, if I'd preach it, he's told me three things would happen. Number one, I'd be blessed, meaning me, my family, and the ministry would be blessed. Number two, the people that believe, receive the message would be blessed. And then number three, he told me I'd be persecuted. But the persecution would never stop the, the prosperity. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's all stand up together, please. Let's lift our hands up to Jesus. We lift our hands up to you, Jesus. You're king. You're worthy. You're awesome. Jesus, you're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. Jesus, you're worthy. Hallelujah. Just that right where you are, just let your just let praise rise to God. Amen. You may feel like that you don't qualify. You may feel like it is not for you, but it is for you. Amen. It doesn't begin with your 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 it doesn't begin with anything but your 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 acceptance and your faith. In his goodness and his good intention over your life. We just we just accept that right now in the name of Jesus. We just accept that right now in the name of Jesus. We accept that right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, we love you. We praise your holy name. You're worthy of all the praise and all the glory. All the worship belongs to you, Lord. It all belongs to you, Lord. We give you praise and glory and worship. Blessing to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Blessing to the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Heads are bowed. Eyes are closed right now. In Jesus' name. Just heads are bowed. Eyes are closed. You're here today and you don't know Jesus as your Savior. If you died today, you're not for certain you'd go to heaven. Then I want to pray for you today. I want to pray for you this morning. Would you just slip your hand up and put it back down? Say, Pastor, that's me. I want you to pray for me. Maybe you've, maybe you've known the Lord and, and you've gone away from following Him and you know that today is your day to recommit your life to Christ. Would you lift up your hand right now? Just slip your hand up. Yes, there's a hand. Someone else. Say, Pastor, today's the day I want to recommit my life to Christ. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Maybe you're here today and say, Pastor, I've got a, 